What is up readers? Welcome to another video. I am the book browser. Today is a very special day because we are discussing the fifth and final book in the Heroes of Olympus series, The Blood of Olympus by Rick Riordan. Damn, this series has been so long. We started from Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief and now we are already at the final book of the Heroes of Olympus series. First, let's talk about the cover, okay? So here we see the beautiful cover of the final book and we see here Jason, we see here Frank, Hazel with Arion and the Giants, okay? I think something's missing or someone. You know who that is? I think it's the other demigods, okay? Where are they? Where are they in this book? In this cover, okay? Specifically in this cover, where are they? I do not like the fact that they are not included in this cover because I like to have all of them in this book cover because this is the final book guys. We are never going to be able to see them again. I'm not ready to say goodbye to all of them because they have made so many adventures that I read and I will really miss them so much. So my initial thoughts when I first went to the bookstore to buy this book is that I noticed the side it's not thick enough you know if you compare the house of Hades spine to this one it's not as many as house of Hades and I was nervous for that part because you know we might not get a, an ending that we want because of these pages I really like books especially last ones that are long because we might get the endings that we want unlike in this one when I first saw this book, I became quite nervous, but nevertheless, I've read it. The POVs in this book are quite different compared to the previous ones because we didn't get Percy, we didn't get Annabeth, and I would have really loved this book if those POVs were added because it's the last book, guys. It's the last book. Even though Nico and Rena were added, they were not enough to make this book as awesome as it can be. Okay, so this book is all about the fulfillment of the prophecy of the seven so coach hedge reyna and nico are going to camp half blood to deliver the athena parthenos to camp half blood while on the other hand the rest of the demigods that are left are going to athens greece to fight gaia and that's what i can say so far without spoiling the book so if you have not read the book i advise you to stop this video and come back if you have read it so Goodbye if you have not read the book and come back if you have read it. Goodbye for the moment. Okay, so let's discuss the book. Octavian. Would this character die already? He's been through many books and he hasn't died ever since. I really do hate him since the first time I've read him. And in this book, he's planning something evil against the Greeks and I don't like it I don't like it he wants to destroy camp half-blood so the Romans could praise him and inside I felt like no way dude you cannot destroy this camp no -uh, because we are a big camp and we can defeat you okay we can defeat you and we will not let you destroy camp half-blood okay no Gaia possessed Coach Hedge in one scene in this book and that made this book quite creepy and I felt nervous because you know it's Gaia, it's the Earth speaking through Coach Hedge. By far this is one of the best scenes I have read throughout the Heroes of Olympus series because this is about Nike and Adidas okay so in this scene Percy and Leo are finding Nike. Nike is a brand of shoe and Leo thought that they should yell Adidas that Adidas shoes are better than Nike so Nike would come out and I was laughing when I read these lines because you know it made sense you know so Leo yelled that Adidas shoes are better than Nike and you know I think that Rick Ryden has been waiting for so long to write that into this book and it just made the book, you know, fun. So apparently these two goddesses are the same goddess and Nike is Greek while on the other hand Victoria is Roman. So 
Nike said in one scene of this book that they would never get the physician's cure, that they would need to revive one of the seven demigods that would die. And I oppose this idea because I know they would find all of the ingredients they need to this cure. Clarice is being a jerk again in this book and then the because she blamed Rachel for not warning them that there are giants outside of the camp. And Rachel defended herself. Good thing, Rachel. You know how to defend yourself. Rachel defended that the gift of prophecy is currently out of commission and you know without the gift of prophecy she cannot tell the future so that's the reason why she hasn't warned them of the giants outside what i thought in this book is that it's just creepy for someone to follow you it's like having a bounty hunter behind you and hades told nico that orion is following them and i hope that they would reach camp of blood fast or else they would face Orion. Hazel also knows which of the seven would die and it's just creepy you know being Hazel like oh my goodness should I tell this person that he or she is going to die or maybe not because you know you know that person is going to die and you're nervous for that person. Okay so this topic sounds like Peabody and Sherman you know the movie with the dog and that little kid with glasses as they go back in time to you know have adventure you remember leo found his way into ojigia in the previous book the house of hades and he swore on the river sticks that he would come back do you remember that because i do remember that scene i'm really glad for leo because he found the location of ojigia through the navigation device given to him by odysseus Apollo is in deep trouble in this book because Zeus is mad at him. Okay, in the scene, Octavian spends money on powerful catapults to defeat the Greeks. He won't stop him. Why won't he stop? I hate him so much. There is also a scene in this book where Piper tells Annabeth to embrace fear and love rather than thinking that she has everything under control. And I think that scene has some deep meaning. Okay, at the temple of Asclepius, um, they concocted the physician's cure with all of the ingredients. I told you, I knew it was coming, they would collect all of the ingredients so that they would make the cure. When I first saw the cover of this book, I saw that Jason has glasses and I was confused. Why would Jason wear glasses? Is this glasses for, you know, just shades or glasses for sight? So this was answered in this scene because Jason was given glasses because he has nearsightedness. Who knew? Finally, the moment has come for the final battle. Gaia has awakened because Percy spilled blood to the soil. And that's how powerful Demigod's blood is. It wakes up the earth. The literal earth. Gaia. Tyson appears in this book and I'm so happy because I missed Tyson since the Sea of Monsters and in this book he mimics Octavian to command the Centurions, and I love that scene. Reyna also confronts Orion with the help of Athena and Bellona, and I think that is so brave of Reyna, and I really admire her as a girl with, you know, fighting spirit and fighting powers. She also brings the statue just in time, before all the Greeks and the Romans would fight. It's just like, okay guys, here's the statue, so... Let's all be together now to defeat Gaia. Jason, Leo, and Piper team up together to defeat Gaia. And Jason used his wind powers to lift off Gaia from the earth because that is the source of her power. And I can't imagine this scene clearly in my mind. I would have to wait for the graphic novel to come out because Rick Riordan is making graphic novels on all of the books in the Heroes of Olympus series and going back on the topic Jason uses his winds to lift off Gaia so that she could not touch the earth because that is her source of power Piper uses her charm speak in order for Gaia to sleep and Leo blasts fire into Gaia and with all of that Gaia is defeated I think that 
this scene is a bit too rushed because you know we've been waiting for this scene in four books and this is what we get i am just a bit disappointed even though that this scene happened it just felt incomplete so with gaia defeated we have different endings for our characters okay first let's start off with nico okay so at the end of this book i felt interested with what would happen when nico tells Percy that he has a crush on him and you know when that scene came I felt what's gonna happen and Nico said that he has a crush on Percy and Percy is like what dude are you serious you have a crush on me and just it's just cool that Annabeth high fives Nico you know high five and it's just you know fulfilling to see that Nico finally told Percy that he has a crush on him. Jason and Annabeth would still visit Camp Jupiter from time to time, but their loyalties lie in Camp half -Blood. Percy and Annabeth would finish senior high school in New York and continue college in New Rome. Lastly, Leo was the one who died as stated in the prophecy, but good thing there is a physician's cure, so he was revived. And guess what? He went back to Ojijia for Calypso and he and Calypso and Festus soared into the unknown as said in the last line of this book and that's where our story ends. Overall, this book is different from the previous ones. I'm a bit disappointed because this page count here is not just enough to be the last book in the Heroes of Olympus series and the fight scene it's just rushed. I'm expecting all of the Greeks and the Romans and seven of the demigods to fight against Gaia. But it ended up being Jason, Leo, and Piper fighting Gaia. And she was defeated easily. You know, the Earth, the big Earth was just defeated that easily. But even though this book felt incomplete to me, it was still a great book. And I would rate it a 4 out of 5 stars and I hope Rick Riordan would make more books about Greek mythology and Roman mythology because I would really miss this series. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, leave a like down below as well as comments. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. I upload videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Don't forget to click the bell button right beside the subscribe one to get notifications from my channel. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Click this video right here for more video about books.